Hey there, everyone. I hope you're all having a fantastic day again today. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. This is your favorite royal critic back here, and today we're diving into some absolutely jaw-dropping news about American Riviera Orchard, and trust me, this is a doozy that you won't want to miss. So now, let me tell you. When I first heard about these trademark troubles, I couldn't help but think, here we go again, because isn't this just so perfectly on brand for our favorite former cable actress turned wannabe lifestyle guru? But let's break this down properly for everyone tuning in today. So here's the tea. Meghan Markle's latest venture, American Riviera Orchard, is currently hanging by a thread. According to legal documents, our legal expert friend John with a spoon has confirmed she's been granted a three-month extension with the trademark office. But this is basically her last chance saloon, folks. And let me tell you why this is such a big deal. First off, there isn't just one application here, there are two. Both with their own serial numbers and both costing $125 each to file for extension. Now, I don't know about you, but for someone who loves to present herself as this savvy businesswoman, this whole situation is starting to look about as organized as a chocolate teapot in summer. What's really getting people talking is what happens after these three months are up. Here's the kicker. If Megan doesn't sort out all these trademark issues, and there are quite a few, technically anyone could start using the name American Riviera Orchard. Can you imagine? The very brand she's trying to build could essentially become a free-for-all. And oh my goodness, let's talk about these trademark issues, because they're absolutely fascinating. First, there's this whole debacle with her logo. Apparently, the trademark examiner couldn't even find the O in her fancy squiggly design. I mean, when your brand's logo is so artistic that official examiners can't even read it, Maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board. But wait, it gets better. Harry and David, you know, the actual established company that's been around forever, has stepped in with concerns about confusion with their Royal Riviera trademark. The irony of Meghan having problems with something royal is just chef's kiss. You couldn't make this stuff up. Then there's this whole geographic location issue. Using American Riviera in your trademark is apparently problematic because it refers to a well-known area. As our legal expert explained, this means she can't stop someone from opening an American Riviera plumbing or American Riviera car wash. Not quite the exclusive luxury brand she was probably hoping for, right? What's really telling here is how this whole situation perfectly encapsulates the difference between Meghan's approach and that of our beloved working royals. While Catherine is out there making real, meaningful changes with her Shaping Us campaign, and William is tackling serious issues like homelessness and mental health, we've got Meghan struggling to even get her jam brand off the ground properly. Speaking of which, remember how this was all launched? That cringeworthy Instagram video with the soft focus and the cooking and the carefully curated lifestyle aesthetic well, now it's looking less Martha Stewart and more messy startup, isn't it? And you know what really gets me? The timing of all this. While our beloved Princess Catherine is bravely battling health issues with such grace and dignity, maintaining her privacy while still keeping the public appropriately informed, we've got this other situation where someone seems more concerned about trademark squiggles and jam jars than actual substance. Let's talk about that lawyer situation too, because this is where it gets really interesting. Apparently, Megan's now trying to throw her trademark lawyer under the bus for these blunders. Now, I've been covering the royals long enough to notice a pattern here. Whenever something goes wrong, it's never ever Megan's fault, is it? It's always someone else who's to blame. Remember Spotify? Remember all those other failed ventures? there's always someone else to blame. Always some external factor that supposedly caused the problem. 
But at some point, you've got to look in the mirror and ask yourself, if everything you touch seems to turn to drama, maybe, just maybe, you might be part of the problem? And let's be real here. These aren't insurmountable problems. As our legal expert pointed out, these trademark issues could be fixed. She could adjust what she's planning to sell, clean up that confusing logo, or even just rename the whole thing. But instead of quietly getting on with fixing these issues during the first 90-day period, here we are with an extension and the clock ticking. What's particularly fascinating is how this whole situation reflects the larger pattern we've seen since Megxit. It's all about the grand announcement, the big flashy launch, the perfect Instagram aesthetic. But when it comes to the actual nitty-gritty of making things work, well, that's where things seem to fall apart. Think about it. We've seen this same pattern play out with the Spotify deal, with Netflix, with that children's book, with the whole Pearl debacle. It's always big promises followed by not much else. And now, here we are again, with American Riviera Orchard potentially facing the same fate. But you know who this must be particularly embarrassing for? Prince Harry. Remember when he was actually respected, actually making a difference with things like the Invictus Games? Now he's standing by, watching his wife's latest venture potentially implode before it's even properly begun. Talk about a fall from grace. And speaking of Harry, where is he in all this? Is he involved at all with American Riviera Orchard? Or is he too busy with his polo matches and his brief visits to the UK where he can't even be bothered to see his family? The contrast between him and William couldn't be more stark right now. Just look at how William is handling everything, supporting Catherine, stepping up his royal duties, being there for King Charles. That's what real family loyalty looks like. Not this constant circus of drama and business ventures that seem to go nowhere. The really sad thing is, this could have all been so different if Meghan had actually taken the time to understand and respect the institution she married into, if she'd been willing to work within the system instead of trying to turn everything into her own personal brand opportunity, imagine what could have been achieved. Instead, here we are watching yet another potential business failure unfold in real time. And you know what's going to happen if this trademark thing doesn't work out? I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. We'll get some carefully worded statement about how this was all part of the plan, or how they're pivoting to something else, or how some unnamed forces worked against them. But here's what's really interesting about this whole situation. It's showing that even in California, even in the entertainment and lifestyle world that Meghan supposedly understands so well, things aren't going quite according to plan. The smoke and mirrors routine that worked so well in the beginning isn't quite cutting it anymore. You know what this reminds me of? It's like when someone joins a book club but never actually reads the books. They just show up for the wine and cheese and try to fake their way through the discussion. Eventually, people start to see through it. And that's what's happening here. People are starting to see through the carefully crafted image. And let's talk about timing for a moment, because this couldn't come at a worse time for the Sussexes. With all the goodwill and support that's going to the working royals right now, particularly to Catherine during her health journey, and to King Charles, as he deals with his own health challenges, this whole trademark drama just makes them look even more out of touch. The contrast couldn't be clearer. On one side, you have working royals focusing on duty, service, and genuine contribution to society. And on the other, you have trademark disputes over jam jars and lifestyle brands. It really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? And let's not forget, this isn't just about a trademark. This is about credibility. Every time something like this happens, every time there's another stumble or another project that doesn't quite work out, it chips away at whatever credibility they might have left. And in the business world, credibility is everything. What's particularly interesting is how quiet Sussex supporters 
have been about all this. Usually, they're quick to defend every move, every decision, every action. But with this, there's been a noticeable silence. Perhaps even they can see that this isn't quite the triumphant business launch it was supposed to be. Looking ahead, the next three months are going to be crucial. Either they'll sort out these trademark issues, which, as our legal expert pointed out, isn't impossible, or we'll be looking at yet another addition to the growing list of Sussex ventures that didn't quite work out as planned. The really frustrating thing about all this is that it didn't have to be this way. If they'd done their due diligence, if they'd properly planned and prepared before making grand announcements, if they'd actually listened to legal advice instead of apparently trying to blame lawyers after the fact, this could have been avoided. But then again, that would require something we haven't seen much of from the Sussex camp. Careful planning, attention to detail, and most importantly, the ability to take responsibility when things don't go according to plan. You know what this whole situation reminds me of? It's like watching someone try to build a house, starting with the roof. No matter how pretty that roof might be, without proper foundations, it's all going to come crashing down eventually. And right now, American Riviera Orchard looks like it's built on some very shaky foundations indeed. What's particularly telling is how this situation compares to how real businesses are launched and run. Most successful entrepreneurs spend months, if not years, getting all their ducks in a row before launching. They make sure all the legal aspects are sorted, all the paperwork is in order, all the potential problems are addressed before they even think about going public. But what did we get with American Riviera Orchard? A soft focus Instagram video, some vague promises about lifestyle products, and apparently not enough attention paid to the actual nuts and bolts of running a business. It's style over substance, once again. And you know what's really interesting? This whole situation is happening right, as Netflix seems to be drawing some boundaries too. Remember those reports about producer credits being denied? It seems like more and more organizations are starting to see through the smoke and mirrors. The thing is, running a successful business isn't about having a fancy title or a pretty logo or a carefully curated Instagram aesthetic. It's about the hard work, the attention to detail, the willingness to do the unglamorous behind-the-scenes work that makes everything run smoothly. And that's something our working royals understand perfectly. Look at Princess Anne, for example. She's been quietly getting on with her duties for decades. No fuss, no drama, just solid, dependable work. Or look at Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, who's become such a valuable member of the working royal family without needing to make a big song and dance about everything. That's what real service looks like. That's what real work looks like. Not this constant cycle of grand announcements, followed by problems, followed by blame shifting, followed by more announcements. At some point, you've got to actually deliver on your promises. So what happens next? Well, the clock is ticking on those three months. Either we'll see some serious work being done to address these trademark issues, or we'll be adding another chapter to the growing book of Sussex Ventures that didn't quite work out as planned. And you know what? Maybe this is actually a good thing. Maybe this is the wake-up call that's needed. Because at some point, you've got to stop blaming others, stop making excuses, and actually take responsibility for making things work. But based on past performance, I won't be holding my breath. And neither, I suspect, will many of you watching this. Because we've seen this movie before, haven't we? And we pretty much know how it ends. So there you have it, my friends. Another day, another drama in the saga of the Sussexes. Keep watching this space, because something tells me this isn't the last we'll hear about American Riviera Orchard and its trademark troubles. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to stay updated on all the latest royal news and analysis.
and let me know in the comments what you think about all this. Will they sort out these trademark issues in time, or is this another Sussex venture headed for the history books? Until next time, stay royal, stay real, and keep supporting our wonderful working royals who show us what true service really looks like. Peace out.